Today we came to an area that is about an hour away from the city, so you need a car again, and I know what you're gonna say. You don't have public transportation? Well, we do, but you have to be within the city to use it. It doesn't come out here. We came to the safari, which is called Bioparque Estrella, and I haven't been here ever since I was maybe 12 years old, so I don't know what to expect, but I do remember that skeleton back there. There are other attractions other than the safari. Right now we are taking a paddle boat around the lake. This is my brother, by the way. Hi. Also, there are a lot of koi fish in this lake, and I feel like we are just running them over with the boat. Oh my gosh. Just to warm up, this is the real thing. Our tour was at two o'clock. We are just waiting to get on the bus. I thought that was a mistake, but I'm kind of wondering what that chair is doing on the windshield. Hey y'all, it's me, your favorite narrator. All right, here we go. Ready to learn about some animales? Every zebra has its own unique pattern on them, much like humans have their own fingerprints. Well, when a mother is about to give birth, she goes away from their pack temporarily so that they can learn the pattern of their newborn. Aw, oh, look at this guy. Ostriches are known as the most loyal birds. When their partners die, they go away from the herd to avoid temptations. A fun fact, male ostriches have a blue spot on their neck, while females don't. BT dubs, you can go through the safari on a bus like Kevin is doing, or you can drive through it. Add an extra cost, of course. We were lucky enough to have an almost empty bus, so I have the entire section of the back of the bus to myself. You can also purchase a cup with food in it, but I wouldn't recommend eating it. Instead, you can get close and personal with the animals. There are two common types of elephants, African elephants and Asian elephants. The easiest way to tell them apart is by looking at their ears. The African elephant has an ear that looks like the continent. This one right here was rescued from a circus, where, unfortunately, they cut off its tusks and tail. It is 38 years old, but elephants under the right care can live up to 100 years. Time for food. These are carnes a tacos. Carnesa is a typical dish in Monterey. It is grilled meat. Since this place is in the middle of nowhere, we decided to have lunch here, and I wasn't really expecting much out of that meal, but it was actually pretty good. Oye, bienvenido a todos los que llegan de por ahí de donde vienes, de Chicago. Y yo te pregunto, en realidad eres muy valiente. Bien, oye. Vamos a traer algunos animales para tener encuentros cercanos. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Tú los vas a tocar. Pero si el animal muerde, si el animal tiene veneno y no llegamos a tocar, no 
mucho tiempo al hospital y por cualquier cosa que pueda pasar. Yo te pregunto, ¿qué mano usas más en tu vida diaria, la izquierda o la derecha? La derecha. ¿Y qué mano quieres utilizar para tocar a los animales? La ¿Qué dice? No hay riesgo, mejor la izquierda. Muy bien. Entonces no le tienes miedo a ningún animalito. ¿Por qué? A lo mejor te lo traemos y te da más miedo. ¿Qué vincula es el animal? ¿Qué más le tienes miedo? A los perros. A los perros, bueno, está bien. Ahora sí, Kevin, manos al frente. Y compañeros, vayan trayendo al animal para que Kevin le pueda tocar. A este animalito él le tuvo ya miedo. Ya lo trajeron, está bien feo. ¿Se lo colocamos? Sí. Wow. ¿Verdad que está bien feo? Oye. Si va a ser la última vez que tengas mano. Muy bien, lo que tenemos de este lado es el que le vamos a colocar a él. Yo te lo voy a colocar, ¿qué te gusta más? ¿Una pulsera o un collar? Un collar, ¿seguro? Entonces, ¿qué cosas caras entonces? ¿Le gusta un collar a usted? ¿Qué pasó? ¿Por qué se pone rojo? ¿Le tiene miedo? Kevin, ¿qué tienes en el cuello? ¿Tócalo? ¿Qué es, Kevin? ¿Qué imaginas? ¿Seguro? ¿No es un collar? Muy bien, Kevin, pon la mano derecha al frente, por favor, con la palma extendida hacia arriba. Y aquí, por favor, no hagas movimientos bruscos. ¡No la muevas! ¿Qué tienes en la mano, Kevin? Se está moviendo. I was chosen to participate in an animal encounter at a show that we just watched and I didn't know what the animals were. They blindfolded me and they put a tarantula on me. Well, that's fine, but I am deathly afraid of spiders. There are these rapids that go down the hill, literally. So far my experience here has been great. It was just as I remembered. If you had kids, they would really love this place and you as an adult might find this place enjoyable as well. If you have a day to spare, make sure to check this place out. Other than that, I will continue to enjoy my stay here and we will see you soon. This place is massive. There's a lot to see, so you will probably need a whole day to experience it. We came to pay our respects to our relatives. Did you know that most graveyards in Mexico look like this? Finally, you get to see this park. I've been talking about it for a long time now. Let's go and check it out. I came here in 2019. It was dark. 
and I got on one of those paddle boats. But when I got off, I didn't realize that the ground wasn't ground and I ended up stepping in water. It was gross. Today, I decided to bring you to the largest urban park here in Monterey. This is called Parque Fundidora. All of that greenery is Parque Fundidora. It has an area of over 360 acres, and it is located very close to downtown. But hey, four videos and you know very little about Monterey. It is the third largest city in Mexico. The metro area has close to 5 million people living in it, and it is located in the northeast of the country, about three hours away from Texas. Because of that, the city is very Americanized. It is very modern and does not really have the typical traditional look. Also, the city is the industrial hub of the country. There are many job opportunities here, but competition is fierce. People that live here are called regios, and they are proud people. The most iconic landmark of the city is called Cerro de la Silla. It is called that because the mountain kind of looks like a saddle that you would put on a horse. But there are many other mountains in the city, which is why it is called Monterrey, the king of the mountains. If Spanish isn't your native language, can you roll your R's and say Monterrey? There you go, you got it. What we're looking at right now is downtown, but let's go back to ground level. However, it wasn't always a park. It was actually a steel foundry. It was founded in the year 1900 and it was one of the largest sources of employment here in the city. In the year 1977, the government gained control of the company and unfortunately in 1986 it went bankrupt and it had to shut down, leaving many without a job. you can find many parts of the machinery that they use here at the steel foundry. This right here used to be a mold that they used in production. But since this place is so massive, there was immediate interest in creating a park within its land, and its location within the city made it an ideal place to do so. Fast forward to the year 2001 and Parque Fundidora was born. Many of the original buildings that were once part of the steel foundry have now been restored and are now part of the park experience in the form of event venues, museums, and even an ice rink. Here we have a children's museum that's very famous in Mexico. You can buy all sorts of snacks here. And there's a wax museum. This is one of the most prominent features here at the park. It was once one of the furnaces of the steel foundry and it is now a science and technology museum. Besides the museum, there's also a restaurant and you can pay to go all the way up to the top of this structure. You remember the Santa Lucia River Walk, right? Ah, uh, yes, look at the color of the water. It's so much nicer here, just like I remember. 
Don't forget that this river connects Parque Pundirara with the Macro Plaza in downtown. It's about 2.5 kilometers long, which means absolutely nothing to me because I think in miles. But from this location, you can take one of those boats that will take you over to the other end. All for a low price. Admission to the park is free, you can walk around, you can bring your own bike or you can rent one as well as some roller skates. The idea is to spend a few moments connecting with nature within the city. We are now going to have some dinner. We came to Taqueria Juarez. There are many locations throughout the city. They sell typical Mexican food here. What you're looking at right now is called antojitos, and that is a term that we use to refer to street snacks or appetizers. And my dinner includes flautas and enchiladas tonight. In case you were wondering, we do have public transportation and here is the evidence. Look at that subway. And all those buses. Now we may not be Mexico City or New York City, but we do have not one, but two subway lines. Today we are in Morelos Street, a pedestrian street lined with shops and restaurants. It is located in downtown, just west of the Marco Plaza. People from all over the city come here to shop or just to take a walk. I know I did that when I lived here. Mirale, look at all the people and all the sales. Oh my gosh, it's so nice here. You can buy most things here. Clothes, shoes, books, even last minute gifts for your kids. Hashtag totally not sponsored by Nintendo. Right now, I'm in Barrio Antiguo. This is one of the oldest parts of town. And in my last video, I talked about how they had to demolish a lot of the old houses in the area. This was the neighborhood that suffered the most. It is located east of the Macro Plaza, and here you can find restaurants, cafes, bars, and nightclubs. Shout out to my friend Michelle for working hard in turning parts of Barrio Antiguo and downtown into pedestrian friendly streets. Do you see those houses behind the blue building? That is one of the poorest areas in the city. But just behind that hill called the Loma Larga, there is a completely different story. There you will find the city of San Pedro Garza Garcia, one of the richest communities in Latin America.
Here you will find multi-million dollar mansions, designer stores, luxury cars, and important company headquarters. A completely different story than the one on the other side of the Loma Larga and much of the rest of the country. At the same time, this is a very modern place and also very beautiful. Oh, and by the way, that in the background is the Cerro de la Silla. Back to downtown. I mentioned that a typical dish here in the city is carne asada, but Monterey is also known for cabrito or goat link. You can eat the meat by itself or with tortillas and hot sauce. We are reaching the end of our tour here in Monterey, my hometown. I know, sad, but I hope you like this series. I try to include all of the main spots of the city, but if I miss any, I apologize but take this as an opportunity to go out there and find them yourself. Be part of the stories of this city. Monterey truly doesn't get the love and appreciation it deserves, maybe because it is not a beach destination, but as I have shown you, it has many things to offer. So go and explore this city that nearly 5 million people call home. By the way, I saved the best for last. This is called the Obispado. It is my favorite spot in the city. From here, you can have an unobstructed view of Monterey in all sides and enjoy the company of family, friends, and this monumental flag, towering over 100 meters high. you wanders out there thanks for watching this series i promise to tag along next time so you don't have to deal with kevin by yourself don't forget to like and subscribe to find out where we're found you next and remember he who dealt it smoked it